Oh, my bad. <sighs> What's up guys, it's your boy Vince the Graham, back with another video. Freshman Advice Part 2. And don't worry, I'm for real this time. Guys, I'm so sorry for being late on this video. You guys are probably three weeks into school and you're like, Where's the real freshman advice? But today, we're gonna get down to what you really need to survive high school. First thing you do when you step in that school, do not pull out that map and start running to class. Don't do that. That's how you get picked on by seniors, literally. Like, everybody will be looking at you and laugh. I've seen a couple people do that. Wait, but dude, you ran the class freshman year. Dude, shut up, they aren't supposed to know that. Anyway, I've seen a few people do that, and it is quite hilarious. So don't run through the halls with your map and your big book bag. That brings me to number two. Don't bring a big book bag to school. Honestly, it's not going to benefit you that much if you have all the stuff in your book bag. That's just going to hold you down, and you're going to be like this, and you're going to have it. You're going to end up with bad posture. You're going to be like this for the rest of your life. Not for the rest of your life, but that happened to me in middle school. I had a big, heavy book bag, and actually at elementary schools, but I used to take all of my textbooks in one book bag, and they used to just be like this on me. And through middle school, like my posture was always like this, and it, like it was just... Look at that. Does that posture scream confidence to you? Does that posture remotely look good? Does this posture remotely look healthy? No, it doesn't. And it took me forever to get my posture back like this. Like It took like a good year. You don't want to have a heavy book bag. I've seen some people who've had a heavy book bag and their posture is literally like this. Like that will do bad things to your back. It compresses your spine. Ah, that, made, that made that hurt for just a little bit that I was doing that. But that compresses your spine. That's actually bad for your health. And my dad always warned me about doing that and just like standing up straight and stuff because it would actually like mess up your spine. I didn't listen. So it took me a year to get back to where it was supposed to be. And also it actually affects your height. Look at my height now and look at it when I do this. You actually lose an inch of height. So if you want to be taller, and carrying a heavy book bag isn't it. That's not how you do it. What I do, and I'll show you guys what I did this year. Guys, I just got a normal size book bag, right? Don't mind the papers inside, by the way. But I got an individual binder for each subject. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm not always cramping everything up. I only bring the textbooks that I need to. If a teacher tells me to bring a textbook that day, then I bring it. Don't actually put all your textbooks in your book bag. And you'll have your map in your hand. Oh yeah, you'll definitely look like a freshman then. And that's how I was freshman year. You don't want to do that. I'm literally telling you from experience. Number three, bring your lunch the first day so you can have stuff that you like because you don't know what they'll have and how good it will be. I school, fortunately, our lunch is pretty good. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. They make some pretty bomb chicken fingers and they used to make good pizza, but I don't like it anymore. So bring your lunch on the first day, see what everybody else is getting, like all the upperclassmen, see what they're getting. And if it looks good to you, then you can get lunch. If not, you can bring your own lunch for the rest of the year and for the rest of your high school career. All right, now let's get down to how to act in class. When you're in class, do not try to be the class clown. Don't do no, what are those? That's, that's so middle school. Don't do that. Like nobody cares if you're gonna be funny or anything. Nobody cares about that. If you're their friend, you're their friend. If you're not, you're not. Also, make sure you pay attention. Most of these classes freshman year, all you have to do is pay attention and you'll pass. If you try a little bit, you'll get B's. And if you try hard, you'll get A's. So the least you can do is pay attention. Don't worry about everybody else around you. Don't worry about what they're doing. Just do you and pay attention and get your work done. Number five. Okay, so you guys probably had a lot of friends in middle school and stuff like that. I don't know, maybe you were just, maybe you were just a loner. I hope you weren't though. That, that must have sucked. You don't need everybody to be your friend. Not everybody in the high school is gonna like you. And you're not gonna like everybody in your school either. So don't even worry about that. You get, you get yourself like a couple friends, maybe five max, and you just hang out with them because you don't need everybody. You're probably gonna get, forget three out of the five of them by the time you graduate anyway. You're probably not gonna be friends with five of those people by the time sophomore year hit. I was talking to like 15 people, only talk to like five of those now. So don't sweat it if you don't have that many friends. It's not that serious. Honestly, if you just have one friend, stick with that one friend for the duration of your high school career. They'll have your back, you'll have their back, and if they're a girl, maybe you'll be a lovely freaking couple someday. In high school, you may have some mean and trifling behind teachers. It may seem like they go out of the way to make sure you fail this class. The old teacher is trying to make you fail the class. Some teachers may be nonchalant enough for, to let you fail the class, but no teacher is trying to make you fail the class. They don't get paid to let you fail the class. Now, 
how to deal with a mean teacher. Now, I recently came across a teacher like this. Maybe, and sometimes you maybe do just need to switch teachers, so request to your parents just to switch the teacher. I once had this teacher who hardly even cared. She would hardly even teach us freshmen who were taking honors algebra 2, which is supposed to be a sophomore class. And then we come to tutoring, and she'd be like, sorry, I'm prioritizing my statistics students. And I'm like, why did you tell me to come to tutoring to get more help anyway? And those, and those teachers, you just need to switch out of their class because they're just honestly not good teachers. And on the other hand, try to be friends with your teachers. You know, sit in their classrooms during lunch if you can, and just try to have a healthy relationship with them because they, they are literally there to help you, and if they like you more than everybody else, then they're definitely gonna help you more. If you come to their tutoring literally every day, they have tutoring because you know you're failing their class, at the end of the semester, they'll probably be like, well, I was trying all year to get an A in this class, but it turns out I got a negative zero, and I don't like that. You know, I've been coming to tutoring like every day. I don't know what else I can do. And they'll probably be like, well, since you have been coming to my class every single day after school to get tutoring, and you seem like you're learning a little bit, and you seem like you're trying, I can't just give you a D so you can pass the class. I'm tired of seeing you anyway. Like, get on up out my office. Take as many APs as you can, and take as many honors classes as you can if you're up to the challenge, because those are going to give you more credits, and APs can give you college credits, and they're going to help you pay for college, because you're getting free college classes, basically. So I definitely suggest that. If you're taking normal level classes, and you're barely passing those normal level classes, don't take APs in that subject, because they will screw you all the way over. And also, guys, learn to be a clutch player. Your teachers will probably always tell you to get your assignments done as soon as possible and stuff like that. Forget that. You need to prioritize what you need to do first. If you have a big project and a smaller project for one other class where the teacher told you to get it done early, do the big project first that's for more points in the other class, and just be a clutch player on the next one. I've had some nights where I've been up till 3 doing an assignment that needs to be done. Honestly, sometimes I did say don't go to bed at 3 because it'll screw you over, but sometimes if you need that assignment done, you need that assignment done the next day. So you have to do it. Whatever you're doing in class that next day in that same class is probably not going to matter as much as that assignment that you had due. So do that assignment. Please don't take an L because you thought you didn't have enough time. I've stayed up so long at night, I've seen the sunlight before. Weekends. Listen, the teachers will tell you this isn't true, but Sunday night is the best time to get your homework done. Enjoy your weekend. Get your, get your homework done somewhere around five or six on Sunday and then take a shower, come out and you'll feel good and you'll be able to relax for the rest of the evening on Sunday evening. But don't try to do your homework all day Saturday or try to do it in little installments, worrying about when you need to do your homework next because that'll stress you out over the weekend and your weekends are when you don't need to be stressed out. Now, let's talk about more of the social aspect again. Do not do drugs. As you saw in part one, that was, I, I hope you guys knew I was just playing. If you didn't, you need to reevaluate your life. Don't do anything I said do in part one. Now, let's actually say you're at a party or something and somebody all offers you some drugs. Um, don't do them. Like, just if, if there's drugs at the party, then leave the party. There's a possibility that you can get arrested because if there's drugs at the party, in one house, everybody in there is getting arrested. So don't do drugs, especially not in high school when you can screw the rest of your life over because if you do get caught, you're going to get arrested and then you're not going to get accepted in any college. All your job opportunities when you finish high school are going to be gone. All the good jobs for the most part, unless you like working at McDonald's, I'm just saying. Unless you want to turn your part-time job at Publix into a full-time job when you graduate, just saying. And don't disrespect your administrators and teachers they're literally all they're trying to do is help you you may not like some of the rules at the moment they're honestly just trying to help you out they're they're doing it for a good reason they're not paid to make your life miserable they're doing it so in the long run it'll be better for you than what you were already doing so yeah guys just obey your teachers be good in high school make good grades and you'll basically be all right make good friends i'll see you guys later peace oh wait i need to end it with a perfect cola i don't know the jingle for electric cherry but drink electric cherry